Hi, and welcome to the Friday Casebook. I'm Lena, a freelance journalist and moderator based in Munich, Germany. And thanks to Roger Casale, the founder of New Europeans, we are going to find out what happened in the world last week. Hi, Roger, good to see you. Hi, Lena, great to see you. And hello to our growing audience on Facebook. So what would you say is the story that absolutely has to go in this week's Friday Casebook? Well, I think we should talk about climate change this week. Uh, one of the great things about uh, Joe Biden's victory is that uh, the US are coming back to the table in terms of the uh, Paris Climate Agreement. And John Kerry has been appointed as the czar, the climate czar by Joe Biden. And let's have a look at him and what he's going to say. The first thing that John Kerry uh, said was that uh, we're back after four wasted years. And uh, with great humility, we uh, want to join the conversation again and uh, tell everybody what to do. <laughs> because the Americans can't resist telling everybody what to do. So uh, his message was uh, that they're back with great humility, but they're going to insist that everybody gets involved in the fight against climate change. And I don't know whether that backdrop is uh, real or whether it's one of those picture postcards that you can put on a Zoom call. But I think it's interesting that he's standing in front of the uh, White House, it seems, and also in front of uh, some trees. And uh, of course, there's not very much on the trees. It's the middle of winter and they're rather barren. But the next thing that he had to say to us was that uh, money doesn't grow on trees and you can see there's no money on those trees. There isn't. <laughs> <laughs> In fact there's nothing at all on those trees. Uh, but after that he said but although there's no money growing money doesn't grow on trees you can make a lot of money out of growing trees and he seems to be putting the emphasis on the private sector uh, as finding the solutions, investment through investment in all kinds of new technologies that can help us to combat climate change. So his second message to the world is there's a lot of money to be made in uh, these new technologies and in these new innovations. Uh, and if we all get together and set uh, our sights on achieving climate neutrality, there's a lot of money to be made. So John Kerry seems to think that to the American leadership and with the energy and the power of the private sector, that uh, if we all come together, we can uh, get back on track in terms of saving the planet from climate change. We know that um, Joe Biden made uh, Anthony Blinken, his Secretary of State, who is a French speaker and spent some time in Paris as a student. I don't think that's Anthony Blinken. Well, I know it's not Anthony Blinken. It's actually John Paul Del Mondo and uh, the late Gene Seibert in uh, Breathless, the film Breathless, Jean-Luc Godard's uh, Jean uh, Breathless in 1960. So sometime before Anthony Blinken was a student in Paris. Just to uh, remind us what happened in Paris last week in relation to uh, climate change, uh, we had the court case uh, where the French government were found to be culpable for not meeting their uh, climate targets and that was followed a fantastic campaign by Greenpeace France and Oxfam France and other uh, or citizen-led organizations. Uh, there's a picture of them saying we have 2.3 million signatures on our petition. They actually ended up at 2.8 million signatures on their petition. And uh, the, the case went to court and um, in a historic unprecedented court case, the French government was uh, found to be culpable. So it's not just the private sector, it's all the public, also the public sector that needs to act. And we, the citizens, who need to put pressure, as they have done on France, to make sure that our governments act in the, in the, in the right way. What else caught your eye this week? Well, the, 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 the thing that caught my eye uh, this week in Europe 
was the visit, Lena, by a number of Italian MEPs, including uh, Pietro Bartolo, who for many years was one of the doctors on Lampedusa, an island off the south coast of Italy, looking after the health of migrants and refugees as they arrived from North Africa and is now in the European Parliament. And he's an absolutely uh, fantastic human being. And he and Brando Banife and other MEPs wanted to go and have a look at the um, refugee camp in uh, Bosnia on the border with Croatia and they, they also wanted to see what was happening in, in right on the border between Bosnia and Croatia and as they walked down the road to try and get to the border post they were stopped, they were prevented from going any further by the Croatian police and they had to call the ambassador, the Croatian ambassador and others and have high level intervention and this was quite extraordinary really that they uh, should have had that experience, I mean they're doing exactly what they should be doing which is on behalf of the citizens going and monitoring what's going on you know if there's some terrible things going on in, a, in, in, in the middle of a dark wood somewhere in Europe. We need to know about it. We need to expose that. We need to find out what it is. And later they went to see the refugee camp itself. And of course, uh, it won't surprise you to know that the conditions there were absolutely shocking. There had been a, a fire there uh, before Christmas and uh, really people are in makeshift accommodation with completely inadequate clothing. And Pietro Bartolo said that, you know, he was in, in tears of what he found there. And we have to say as Europeans that so this is not acceptable. Who's on the naughty step this week? So um, you'll remember that um, in January there was an attempt by Trump supporters to um, invade, well they, they succeeded, the I do remember it clearly. <laughs> and, uh, and prevent uh, the uh, formal should have been just a formal process of uh, legitimizing the uh, election results and confirming Biden's uh, uh, election as president. There has to be a procedure in the Congress and they tried to prevent that from happening by physically invading Capitol Hill. Well, and the whole world was watching, including the army in Myanmar. And they obviously thought, well, that's a good idea. Why didn't we think of that? And there's been an election in Myanmar too. And uh, Aung San Suu Kyi won the election. And uh, just as it, with the US case, there has to be a particular ratification process uh, in, the, in the Myanmar parliament. And of course, that was the, having observed these events on Capitol Hill, um, that was exactly the moment that the Myanmar uh, army picked to shut down the parliament, to lock up Aung San Suu Kyi and protesters and to announce a state of emergency for one year and to have their military coup. And that was straight out of the uh, playbook that they've seen in, in Washington. And uh, so I, I would like this, the entire army of Myanmar on the naughty step. When it comes to Europe, what else is happening here? Well, we've had a, a very sad anniversary in Europe this week because it's been the anniversary of uh, Brexit. And I just uh, want to recall for our uh, dear uh, listeners on Facebook that uh, a year and a week ago, uh, a Tiger team from New Europeans bravely stood on Parliament Square in London and also outside another team stood outside the European Parliament in Brussels. Uh, and also outside Europe House in London, the representation of the European Union in London. And we had a candlelit vigil. We promised uh, that day that we would be the uh, last ones out of Europe House. We were the last ones out of Europe House in London before Britain left at midnight Central European time that, that evening. And I promised our team that we'd be the first ones back if Britain ever joined the European Union again. And I just make the point that although a lot of people think the citizens are not paying the price of Brexit, in fact, uh, sadly, they are paying the price of Brexit. And we heard testimonies on the 1st of February this week from uh, citizens, EU citizens in the UK and British citizens in the EU, of all the ways in which life has suddenly become much more complicated, much more costly, much more challenging. All the individual stories where people are still struggling despite the withdrawal agreement 
to get their lives back to normal and some of them never will. So uh, citizens are paying the price for Brexit and we at New Europeans will continue to count the costs. So last question for today, what's coming up? The day that I would highlight to our, our dear uh, listeners on Facebook is uh, Sunday, the 7th of February, uh, the day of solidarity with Belarus. You can find uh, details on the New Europeans website, neweuropeans.net. Uh, we have a declaration of solidarity between Europeans, which we invite uh, our audience to share. But whatever you're doing, wherever you are on Sunday, spare a thought for the women and men who are bravely standing up for their human rights, standing up for democracy as temperatures reach minus 20 below zero in the face of an absolutely brutal regime. They're doing it for the future of Belarus, they're doing it for the future of Europe. For democracy to prevail around the world, we must hold the line, we must stand up for Belarus. Thank you very much for yeah, the call to action that we need to stand up with the people in Belarus and also for keeping us informed. And the audience, please subscribe to our New Europeans YouTube channel. See you all next week. Bye. See you next week.